Bunchurigars, or undulated grass parakeets, are one of the smallest members of the parrot family. In their natural state, they are found only in the semi-arid inland areas of Australia. They are, almost without exception, as green as the grass they feed on, and they're gregarious by nature, often flying in swarms like locusts, until the sky is dark with their wings. The transformation of this small grass parakeet into one of the most cheerful and companionable of household pets began over a hundred years ago in Britain, on the far side of the world from the bird's natural habitat. The naturalist John Gould, who was famous for, among other things, his beautiful drawings of then rare wild birds, brought home to Britain in 1840 the first pair of budgerigars to study them and make drawings of them. To his surprise, they settled down comfortably in this damp northern climate. Before long, other travellers had started importing them into Europe. And then a very curious thing happened. In captivity, the birds suddenly started to produce colour mutations. They began to appear in colours other than the original grass green. First came yellow in 1872, and then in the 1880s, sky blue. Today, the three and a quarter million pet badgerigars in Britain come in well over 200 colours or combinations of colours. And although they remain essentially gregarious by nature, another very curious thing happened. It was discovered that if you take a young badger away from the nest and put it in a cage on its own, far from fretting, it will quickly settle down quite happily with only human companionship and in fact makes the ideal pet for both adults and children. The programme you've been watching on Budgerigars was presented by Philip Marsden. Next week... Thank you, Philip. Uh, Hi, Mrs. Gerard. There we are. There's your tea. I asked for coffee. You got tea. What have you been watching? Programme on Budgerigars. Budgerigars? Budgerigars. Well, that's it, then. What's what, then? Present for the twins at the end of the road. <laughs> You're joking. Those two four-year-olds, they wouldn't know how to look after it. You can advise them. You always do. Look, you know everybody, don't you? Practically. Ask the expert, then. All right, I'll have a word with this Philip Myers, and he's an expert. All right? Yeah. Now can I have my coffee? No, I really wasn't exaggerating. Budgies do make ideal pets for youngsters, or for people of any age, for that matter. They're very hardy, you know, and they take very little looking after. All right. Supposing I do decide to go along with Val and buy one for the twins, how do I start? Well, you need a really young bird to begin with, because young birds settle down that much more easily with human companions. Hmm? And it pays you to go to a reputable dealer to get one, because it's very difficult for an amateur to tell either the age or the sex of a young bird. It's very difficult for professionals to tell the sex of a baby budgie. Mm. But there is a general rule about age, and that is that if you get a bird that's still in nest feather, it's mm -hmm. young enough to train. Now, here you can see the nest feather characteristics, this barring down the forehead right to the beak, and no spots, mm. which is a characteristic of the adult bird. But before you get the bird, you should have a cage all ready for it to come home to. And the cage should be big enough so that the bird can actually fly in it. There should be at least a foot between the perches, so it can't just hop from perch to perch, but it should actually fly. It's important, too, that the top perch should be at least three inches below the top of the cage, so that the bird isn't forced to stoop. Some people use a plastic tidy around the cage to prevent the husks from being scattered all around the room when you blow them off the top. And you have to do this frequently because the birds crack open the seeds, leaving the husks in the food container, and if these aren't removed, the birds can't get at the whole seed underneath. 
It's very important, too, to buy good packaged seed mixtures, which contain a balanced diet plus certain additives which keep the bird in tip-top condition. These you don't get in ordinary bulk bird seed. There is also the point that as packaged seed is cleaner, it's far less likely to have dust and mice contamination, which are injurious to the health of budgerigars. And it's important that the food container should be open-topped so that the budgie can get at the seed easily. And though budgies drink very little, there should always be a supply of clean, fresh water in the cage. What's that white stuff for? Well, that's cuttlefish bone. It provides the calcium the bird needs and helps keep its beak in good condition. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you should always buy it from a reputable source because the kind of pieces you can pick up on the beach are almost certainly contaminated. Yeah. Mineral grit is also needed because budgerigars don't have teeth and require the grit to break down the seeds to a digestible paste in their crops. All birds need to do this, which is why you so often see wild birds apparently eating gravel on the roads. Now what else do you give them to eat? Well, a millet spray about once a week is a special treat. People often ask me about other tidbits. A golden rule is never give budgies prepared human foods. A piece of apple or carrot or a well-washed leaf of lettuce is fine, but it's terribly important to take these extras away as soon as they start to wilt or go stale. Unless you use a seed treated with iodine, your budgie should have an iodine nibble for health reasons. Most people give their budgies some toys to play with. These things can give hours of pleasure to a budgie, but make sure that the cage isn't too cluttered. Too much furniture is worse than too little, because the budgie will have no room to fly around and get enough exercise. It's so simple to keep a budgie's home clean. Once a week, wash the cage, feeding pots, toys and perches. Sand or sanded paper makes it easier to keep the cage clean. Use special disposable sand sheets. The rough surface helps the budgie to keep its claws in good condition. After washing everything, rinse them thoroughly and dry them off before putting them back. The positioning of the cage is very important. Budgies, curiously enough, don't usually need artificial heat, but they do need light. They're very healthy, but subject to colds and similar problems, so you should never put the cage where it's in a draught or too near a window where the bird will be exposed to extremes in temperatures, direct sunlight with no shade during the day and cold at night. They like company, but the cage should never be put in a position where people are likely to bump into it. Nor should it be put too near a gas fire or stove where there may be fumes. Finally, the cage should always be prepared before the bird's put into it, and for the first day or two until the budgie gets to know his way around, a second open-topped seed pot should be left on the cage floor. This can be removed, of course, as soon as the budgie has discovered his regular seed supply. What's all this about budgies being able to talk? Six to nine weeks of age is the ideal time to start a budgie talking. You should give him a couple of days or so to settle down in his cage hmm? and then start finger training. Finger training? Yes, getting him used to climbing on your finger and coming out of the cage. Oh. Of course, whenever you're doing this kind of training, you should make absolutely sure that the doors and windows are shut. And if there is a fireplace, see that it's covered by a fire screen or something. Come on, boy. And once you've got him used to standing on your hand like this, you just talk to him, repeating the same word over and over again, in the same tone as far as you can manage each time, like Arthur, Arthur. Most birds will learn their first word or phrase in about four to six weeks, 
And once they've got that one, they'll pick up a new word or phrase very quickly indeed. Do you really mean I could teach a budgie to say Sid James is the funniest thing on the telly? <laughs> Even that. Well, you'd have to take it a little slowly, of course, a bit at a time. Mate, you've convinced me. I'm going to buy a budgie for the twins, but first, I'm going to see it does a little bit of publicity work for me on the side. <laughs> now then, can you fix me up with a really good talker? Most birds will talk, providing you've got the patience to teach them, and providing also that you start early enough and teach them before they've learned to talk in their own language. And incidentally, they don't talk through their beaks, you know, they talk from their throat. And any beak movement that you might see has got nothing to do with the sounds that they're making. Well, that's enough, Arthur. Come on, get back in. There was a bird called Sparky Williams once who had a vocabulary of over 550 words. And he could say eight nursery rhymes straight through without a pause. Little Jack Arthur sat in the corner eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good pie am I. And don't forget, if you want a budgie to talk, you should just keep the single bird. It's almost impossible to get them talking if you have a pair. A pair? I wouldn't dream of buying a pair, mate. They'd only start breeding like rabbits. <laughs> no, oddly enough, that would be very unlikely. They're gregarious by nature, you see, and they need the stimulus of the other birds around them before they'll even attempt to breed. For many people, breeding is the most fascinating aspect of keeping budgies. In their wild state, different colored budgies were rare because their offspring soon reverted to the predominant green strain. It was only when the birds could be selectively bred in captivity that the present total of over 200 different colours and varieties became possible. But the experiments are not yet at an end. So far, nobody has produced a black or a red budgie, though this may be impossible because of the physical makeup of the bird. But there is a 500 pound prize for the first British breeder to produce a genuine pink-breasted budgie. When the birds are breeding, you have to inspect the nest box every day to see that all's okay. You have to be careful about handling the eggs, because the hen turns them every day to ensure that the chicks are not born deformed. And if you accidentally turn an egg in the nest, the hen may turn it again and possibly produce a deformed chick. After about 18 days, the first chick emerges and another should hatch every other day. It's fascinating to see the eggs hatch and the young birds, born with no feathers and embryonic eyes, and develop within 30 days into fully-fledged budgerigars. The thing about keeping budgies is that they adapt happily to so many ways of life. There are old ladies who find budgies ideal companions. They're perfectly happy left on their own for long periods and they don't have to be taken out for walks. If you're more ambitious, you can go in for more colourful specimens. They still cost only a few pounds to install and a few pennies a week to maintain. If you decide to breed, you can start with a couple of pairs in simple breeding cages and who knows where it may all end. There are budgies that are allowed the freedom of the garden and return to their cages at will. From July to December, at shows up and down the country, thousands of Britain's budgerigars too go on show. If you do decide to go in for breeding show birds, you could end up producing a champion. But breeding's still fun, even if you've no ambition to produce a champion. In fact, you can spend as much time and money as you can afford, or as little as you can spare, on budgies. Come on now, lad. You've got an audience here now. Now, say it again. Go on, you said it once for me. You did, you know, you said it just now. Now, come on then. Don't be shy. Well, come on, let's hear you. Look, 
Look, mate, I'm warning you, this is your last chance. Otherwise, you go straight back to where you came from and the kids finish up with a bag of jelly babies. Now, you ready? Sid James is the funniest thing on the telly. Can you hear me? Sid James is the funniest thing on the telly. Sid James thinks it's the funniest thing on the telly, mate.